All right, I'm sitting here with Angela. How are you doing? Hi. All right, I just ran into you. Um, it's Christmas morning. Uh, mm -hmm. So I ran into you, asked you if you could do an interview, and you were nice enough to say yes. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell me a little bit about yourself, like where you're from? Um, I grew up in Taconi, around like Norton Tarzell. Um, I have three siblings. I have great parents. They're fucking awesome. You know what I mean? It's not like I grew up with a rough home life or nothing like that. You know, everything was great. You know, um, sometimes my mom, like, she'll, she'll say, make a comment, like, you know, I, I, I blame myself, and I'm like, you, know, you can't blame yourself for shit, you know? There's people that grew up worse than me, and they don't go do drugs about it. Yeah. You know, it's just, um, I have a me problem, and unfortunately, that, like, you know, that's the way I cope. And unless I'm sober with some kind of sturdy foundation to replace that, that's that's what I'll do every time. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, you know, I had a pretty, pretty decent life. It it was a uh, I guess it was like, you know, kind of something specific specific that got me into it. But now like when I think back when I was a teenager and like I started smoking weed when I was 13, like when I started smoking weed, like I smoked weed to the extreme. You know what I mean? Like it had to be like an all the time thing. And then it was drinking, like, I had to drink every weekend. And it, I didn't have, like, a problem or anything. But, um, I had this ex-boyfriend, like, at the time, senior year. And, uh, you know, when I broke up with him, he was real abusive. He would do, like, a lot of evil things. So I broke up with him, and he, um, he stalked me for a while. Uh, he ended up like you know break breaking into where i lived and uh you know he raped me tried to kill me um luckily my neighbors had heard you know something going on and and they came and, and like saved me basically but uh i was so scared of my ex-boyfriend i didn't tell anybody any of this happened i, w I was fucking terrified and within a week of that happening like Molly was real big at the time, like the whole ecstasy thing. And I tried it for the first time. And you know, it's like euphoria, it makes you so happy. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I'm just doing this shit. You know what I mean? This is the only thing that's taking my mind off it. But obviously, not Molly's not something you do every day. You don't get addicted to that. So from that, it went, you know, like maybe taking it to the annex here and there. And. And then Percocets, which I didn't even like at first. But then, you know, I started, you know, sniff, sniffing a little piece of a Perc 30. That was great. And I ended up doing them every day. And I didn't even, like, think of becoming, of it becoming a habit. And I'll never forget my daughter's father the one day was like, you want us to box in? I'm like, for what? He's like, you know, you're going to get sick. I'm like... No, I'm not. He's like, you know, Ange, think about, like, you know, we're doing 30s every day. Like, you're going to get sick. And I didn't really believe it. And then once I felt that, that withdrawal, I was like, I'm fucked. Like, yeah. god damn. So, uh, you know, from then I had, like, a, I had, like, a long struggle, like, you know, on and off with the pills. And, um... Things like progressively got worse, but I, I still swore I was never doing heroin. You know, a lot of people I knew were on heroin, but I didn't think of it as like the same thing. Like out of all my friends, I think I was the last person still doing 30s. Right. So your your opiate addiction started with with pills, then, and it, like it went with pills yeah. for a while. Yeah. Well, How long were you able to <clears throat> to? Continue just the pills until that becomes what, unaffordable at some point. This went on for a couple of years. Um, mm. Now, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was clean, um, and I'll never forget. He came up to the hospital to visit me when I, after I had her, and I didn't even ask. He came up there and brought me a thirty, mm. and I'm like, you know, you just give labor. Fuck yeah, I'm doing a thirty. You know what I mean? Mm. And 
not long, like, I obviously I started doing them again, but not long after I had had her and was home from the hospital, I remember he said, uh, because he was doing dope before me, I'll never forget, he threw a bag of dope at me and said, look, I'm, I can't support your 30 habit anymore. Here's a bag of dope. Do it or be sick. <clears throat> and I sat, I, it had to be like six hours, like, I sat there just staring at it. Like, I didn't want to do it. I, I really didn't. I'm taking care of a newborn kid. I'm sick as a motherfucker. You know what I mean? And, like, I remember I, I, eventually I caved. And the first thought I had was, like, this is the same thing as a Perk 30. Oh, my God. And it's, what, $20 less? When you felt it. Yeah, yep. you're like, okay, I'm, it's the same high. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? a quarter of the price. Yeah, so, you know, I stayed uh, I stayed stiff and dope for a while. I left him and moved back into my parents' house, but they didn't know. So he's, like, blackmailed me <clears> with <throat> it, right? So my mom finds out I'm getting high, and she's like, you got to get help. And at this point, I was like, yes. Like, the jig is up, you know what I mean? I'm, like, mm. I'm ready to go. Mm. So I go to rehab. But, like, I didn't know a thing about, like, what it took to stay sober, any of that. Like, I didn't know, like, I wasn't convinced I was a drug addict, let alone knew, like, what that entailed in general. Right. You know what I mean? So, I left rehab after, like, two weeks, and I didn't stay sober very long. Like, I ended up getting high again, blah, blah, blah. And this was an off and on thing until uh, I got caught getting high at some point. My mom threw me out. I oh, you on, got caught in her, in her house. Yeah, yeah. I, I went on a little bender, right? And um, I went to rehab and I, like we had decided I was going to a recovery house af afterwards. And a friend of mine's mom, her name is Marie Kelly, she was running a house on Venango and Aramingo. So I moved in there, and that was the best decision I could ever made. I mean, like, me and this group of girls, like, we all had just, like, great energy. We fed off each other. Like, you know, we were all sober, and it was the best experience of my life. Like, if I didn't have, like, build the foundation I did there, like, yeah, who knows? So, you know, it helped me a lot, and I remember, like, being so happy, being sober, I would walk through Kensington, all the way to Kensington and Somerset, to the last stop for the women's meeting every Wednesday, because, like, there was girls there that, like, you know, they, they didn't know, they wanted help, and, like, I genuinely wanted to help them, like, you know, I no thoughts of getting high, like, because I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing to stay sober. So you... You built a, a good base in your sobriety, and, yeah. and you were able to enjoy life a little bit. Yeah, and it was fucking awesome, you know? Mm. Now, I eventually, like, moved back into my parents. Um, they were so scared of me, like, running out and getting high. And, like, there was a lot of factors that fed into it. Like, I didn't want to worry them, so I would just stay in the house and, you know... Little by little, I'm not doing the things I was doing that, that kept me sober. Right. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I still stayed good for a while. And uh, so I had something happen with my leg, right? Well, I had, a I, had, I had a blood clot in my leg. Here I had gotten, like, a bruise on an artery, which, like, caused the clot, and which I didn't know I had. I kept thinking, like, it was pins and needles in my leg. Well, here, this blood clot's growing. It's breaking down my muscle, passing through my kidneys, and uh, my leg starts to swell up, and when it got bad, it got bad fast. So, you know, I get rushed to the hospital. My leg's so swollen. They, like, medevac me to Temple. Uh, they were going to cut my entire leg off. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> what they ended up doing was they cut my leg open like there oh, um wow. on the inside of my thigh and that was all for a um oh wow 
Well, because my legs swelled up so yeah. bad, they had oh, to wow. they had to like cut it open and relieve the pressure wow. here on the thigh all the way up to my hip. Ooh. And like COVID had first started, right? And I remember telling them like, I'm a recovering addict, blah 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 blah. Like, but surgery like this, they're giving you fentanyl, Dilaudid, yeah. they're giving me perks every couple of hours. Um, I couldn't have any visitors because of COVID. Couldn't have books, nothing. So like. I'm in the hospital, like, my mental health is fucked at this point. I'm on, like, FaceTime with my mom every day crying. Um, I was in there for a month. Uh, I had to learn how to walk again and everything. But, uh, mind you, when I left the hospital, like, I, I had an opiate habit already. Just uh, from the pain Just that from that like, whole month. Yeah, I mean, that, that's how it happens. It takes that, it's that quick it can It's happen. that quick, and it's like... I just Especially when your body knows the opiate. You know, it seems like you get addicted again so much faster every time. Yeah, it's just like... I remember being, like, so angry because it was, like... It's not like I went out and, like, you know, like, chose to relapse or something. It was, like, kind of just a fucked situation. Yeah. And, uh... But, you know, it, as bad as it, it sucked... Like once you know, once you're, once you're getting sick, once you have a habit, you know it's almost impossible. Yeah. It's just like almost impossible. And uh, I tried like on and off for a while after that to get sober, and like I was in and out of rehab, and like every time I went, and I was like, I'm ready, like. I could have passed the lie detector test telling you I was ready, I was done, I wanted to get clean, and then I'd be in there, and, like, I couldn't get past his withdrawal. Now, like, mind you, I've, you know, had been clean from dope before, and I would get clean cold turkey and I'd be fine. But, like, the shit they were putting in it by this point, like, I don't know what the like. I don't know what this is, but it's never been this hard. So I've heard so. Everyone I interview is talking about how much different and how much harder the withdrawal is. Now, now before coming off, you know, opiates, if you would get methadone rehab, you might even get a little high off the methadone. Like it, it worked. I always said like I'd be still partying in detox because of the methadone. Yeah. You know, it's, the, so you're right. The shit they have now. Like, I mean, the methadone won't touch it. Wow, that's so scary. Like, even Narcan right now isn't bringing people back. Wow. They're using that's something funny. else. That's funny. I have, oh, I got a whole uh, glove box full of Narcan. I had to use it, uh, three of them on one person. I, it was yeah. just laying on Kensington Ave about yeah. a month ago. And people don't even know, you're not supposed to, like, even use more than three. I know. But since people aren't coming back, the Narcan's not working, like, no one knows what to do. Like, even rehabs are telling people, like, look. You know, I'll be honest, I'm, we're not equipped for this detox yet. Yeah. You know, this is going to suck for you. So, like, not only was there an epidemic going on, it's worse now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and it, it's just, it's been a struggle. And, like, I thought to myself, like, you know, if I, if I swore I was so ready then, and I think I'm ready now, what's the difference? Yeah. You know, like, what, what, what do I do? Yeah. I, I, I don't know, it's so hard to, uh, you're in a hard situation, you know? Yeah. Hold on a second. My mask back on. Like, it, rehab detox was hard enough for me. It took me about 50 times, and that was just regular yeah. heroin. I mean, I don't, I wish I knew what to tell you guys how to to fix this it just seems yeah. like you guys are up against so much it's like and it was the detox was never a problem mm -hmm. like the detox was one thing it was like once you leave those rehab doors like that's when shit's real yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. but like the fact that like i i can't even get through the detox is like fuck yeah you know yeah and you were saying with your family, if and when hopefully you do decide to try and get clean again, you have good sober support. Oh my God! Like my family's amazing. Uh, like they're the best. That's important. And, they are know. the best. I have a five-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. um, and they're all like, they're all teamed up. Like you know, everybody like has their turn, like taking care and making sure she's doing great. Like the, 
I have the best. They're fucking awesome. That's good. You know, I couldn't thank them enough. Yeah, now a lot of people in, in your situation have nobody yeah. on the outside. So at least, you know, that that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. Um, are you, where are you at right now? Are you, I don't want to say happy, but are you content just getting high right now? Or, or is it you m miserable to the point where you might want to go get help? Like, in your head, where are you at right now? I'm so fucking miserable, mm -hmm. you know? Like, like, I can't even just have a conversation with my mom without, like, <sighs> it's hard. Yeah. But you do get to talk to her still, though. Yeah, yeah. And, like, uh, I was talking to her the other day, and she was telling me how um, my daughter got student of the month, and, like, she read her first sentence out loud, and I'm like, I'm missing everything. I'm missing everything, and, like, as hard as, like, as bad as I don't, I don't want to. I don't, I can't stop, and it's, it's the hardest thing, like, I, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, I wouldn't, you know, yeah. I really wouldn't, it's, uh, it's horrible, it really is, and, like, it's, it's, like, I don't even think, like, as far as, like, you know, uh, like, a. I don't know, the city, city health, you know, medical build, whatever, like, hospitals, detoxes, like, they don't even know what the fuck to do. Yeah. You know, and everybody has such a misconception, like, you know, they think, like, you know, just we want to get high and, like, and that's it, fuck it, like, like, you know, it's, it's not the case, it's just, like, there's this thing that runs your life. And, you know, no matter how bad you want to fight it, like, and people, oh, well, you just didn't hit rock bottom yet. It's like, you know, when you're a drug addict, you don't have a rock bottom because your rock bottom's got a basement door. Right. Like, every time you think it can't get worse, it will get worse, you know? <laughs> and, um, it, it's led me to the point where, like, it, it's turned me into a person I never thought I'd be, like... You know, it has me doing things that, like, I, I'm disgusted with myself. And it's not like, oh, pity me, you know what I mean? It's just, like, it just makes me think of it in a way, like, damn, like, if it's got me this bad, like, how the fuck am I going to get out of it? Yeah. You know? I mean, you... You can you, you can get out of it. It's, no, yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'll never give up hope. I yeah. would never ever stop trying because I had that time sober and it was the greatest time of my life. And so, I I know I can do it again. Yeah, I know I can, and I would never stop trying. At least for my daughter's sake. Yeah. I but, can just by talking to you. I can. Your head is still clear. You know what I mean? Like you could definitely get back up and reintegrate into society. It's just something you got out keep trying until you get it you know yeah. like i told you it took me about 50 times yeah uh, i mean i'm 36 i'm 42 now i didn't get till 36 like just keep trying you yeah. know and don't listen to the people that are oh i don't assholes. listen to any of that shit because unless you've been through it you would never get it that's what i try and explain to people like unless you felt the withdrawal from an opiate like full-blown withdrawal it's you can't understand the the lengths you'll go to make that go away yeah it's the lengths you don't even it's weird for me like I said it'll be eight years in April now right I still I will never forget that feeling of withdrawal yeah. yeah I don't remember too much from my childhood anything like that my memory's not the best I remember withdrawal that's yeah. never leaving me and it is literally the worst thing I've ever felt in my life it's like uh, it's crazy cause, like I know you know people in recovery that are say 10 years clean and they're like listen I love smoking crack if I could do it successfully I would but I just can't that's me. <laughs> you know that's what I mean me. uh, crack, crack is fun as hell but and like I, I mean that's just being completely honest yeah. you know yeah. I even say to this day it's the shooting up the first time is to, to this day the best feeling I've ever had in my life yeah and it'll, uh, nothing else will ever compare to it honestly I, I swear to god if 
it wasn't for me shooting dope that first time, I don't think I'd be out here right now. Just because of that rush. That rush is really what... what you talking what, about the shooting it up rush. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, that rush is what had me AMA and continue ever since then. Yeah. Now, a couple more quick questions and then we'll let you go. Um, where do you sleep? Like, are you outside or do you get to sleep inside? No, I have, um, I have like a few places to go. Um, now I stay, I had a really good friend of mine from AA who's seen me on the street. And he was like, look, you always have a place to stay here. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Um, right now, like, I'm, I've been kind of like hanging out with, you know, a friend of mine, staying there with her. But it, before this, at one point, I was straight on the street, like last summer at some point. Like, and I mean, like, by myself, not with anybody else, like, sleeping on a bench in Needle Park or paying someone $5 to watch me sleep outside Quick Stop so no one fucking bothers me. Yeah. Like, and like, there's like a lot of shit. Like, I, I don't tell my family because I know it would break their heart. I mean, if they say it here, they say it here. It is what it is. But I mean, you're a a a, a, a woman on some of the dangerous streets of the dangerous city in America. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bad things are gonna happen to you eventually. It's oh the, yeah, and they have. I'm sure, they have. I mean, it's they have. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's there's been some shit. Like if I and like. I guess I've become so jaded, like, you know, when I talk to people about, like, you know, like, things like this have brought me to, and they look at me like, oh, my God, like, what the fuck? And, like, I guess I talk about it like it's just so regular. But maybe that's how, the, how you cop, cope with it right now, is talking like it's regular. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I like to see things like, um, you know, whatever you go through, you, you just gotta, you gotta learn from it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't learn something from it, then it's a waste of time. You're not going to get anywhere throwing yourself a pity party. Right. You know, so you just learn something, be more careful, whatever. Right. You know, whatever the case may be. But, yeah, I was out there, like, on, straight on the street. I remember um, I, I hadn't showered in days, and it was, like, summertime. And I had, like, a couple friends of mine I was with down there. We were on, like, a F and Clearfield where the fire hydrant is and I'll never forget <laughs> they're holding up towels around me and I'm getting a shower under the fire hydrant so cold I can't breathe right. <laughs> but like and the shit we do the shit we fucking like put ourselves through just just to get high like the way it runs your life like things I don't want to do like I'm in tears fighting myself not to do it and can't help it well, you need the next bag yeah don't, it's gonna get sick it's it's vicious. It's vicious. Yeah. Um, now, if I see you in the future going forward, can I stop and have another conversation with you? Uh, yeah, see how absolutely, we're doing? absolutely. Because I want to, like, I'm doing. I want to find, you know, a good group of people that are down here, and then continue the dialogue with them. You know. Uh, yeah. And, and I uh, yeah. think that's important, so people can see, like. You know, if you're getting worse, maybe you're getting better. Absolutely. And, you know. and even if I'm sober, of course, because, like, like I said, when I had that time sober, like, I made a point to, like, educate people about addiction because people would look at me and they would have never thought I did drugs. Right. Even still sometimes. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, this can happen to anybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like we were saying off camera, like I said, my favorite saying is uh, addiction doesn't discriminate. I say that all yeah. the time. Cause it, it's, and it's important to say that because yeah. it can reach out and touch anybody whenever it wants to. Yeah. I, I had a coworker and she's like, yeah, I can't stand that Narcan shit. People just use it so they can keep overdosing and keep getting Narcan. It's so ignorant. That's... Yeah. Never, I have never seen that be the case at all. And I said, that's funny, because I've been... She said, I don't think someone should be Narcan more than once. And I said, well, I thought we were friends. Right. She's like, what? I'm like, I've been Narcan four times. So right. if that was the case, you wouldn't know me. And she looked at me like, no. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in recovery. Yeah. <laughs> like, you might, might, might have changed her whole outlook on, on yeah. addiction just with that little interaction. Yeah, and Maybe. Like, I don't know. She could still be. I don't know. And, like, that's just, like, something that was important to me at the time. Because, yeah. like, people treat drug addicts like they're less of a person. Yeah. And it, 
it makes me so sad, yeah. you know. I think you could be a valuable tool in, uh, to help people in addiction if you get clean and stuff again, you know. Yeah. I got faith. I think you'll do it. Yeah. You know, when you're ready. I'll never, like I said, I, I would never stop trying. Yeah, that's it. Know? Just keep trying. A lot of times I just went because I, it was too cold to rehab at the time. You know what I mean? But you just keep going. You'll, yeah, whatever you'll get case it at some may point. be. You'll get it at some point. <laughs> All right, yeah. Angela. It was really nice talking to you. It was nice talking to you. All right. And try to enjoy the rest of your Christmas the best you can. I will. Merry right. Christmas. Thank you.